You know, for a colorway that I didn't think I was gonna like, I'm really starting to like it. What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler, and today I'm reviewing the upcoming Air Jordan 1 Brotherhood. Right off the bat, the colorway of this shoe is pretty different than most of the other Air Jordan 1s that we get on a regular basis. I mean, sure, the color blocking of this shoe, I guess, is similar to that of the bread toes, but the colors that were used on this shoe are pretty different than most other pairs of Air Jordan 1s. You don't often see maroon used on Jordan 1s or bright yellow, and this shoe uses both and mashes them together. But you know what? I've got to say, even though it's a non-OG colorway, I'm kind of into it. So to fill you all in on how you can grab a pair of the Air Jordan 1 Brotherhoods, these shoes have an official release date of February 24th and a retail price of 170 bucks. As far as where to actually grab these shoes, they're dropping on the Sneakers app at 10 a.m. on February 24th, and are probably dropping at most other foot sites through their Flux programs or whatever programs they have. But if you're crazy like me and you want to grab a pair early for a pretty high markup, you can grab a pair on GOAT right now through the affiliate link in the top of the description. Or if you don't want to spend the money, you can still check the resale price through that same link. But as much as I like the way that the Air Jordan 1 Brotherhood looks, I feel like the box was a missed opportunity. And to show you guys what I mean, here's the box. It's your standard Air Jordan one box. And what's interesting about this is that for a lot of the recent Air Jordan 1 releases, they've been changing things up on the box. Like with the uh, the Crafteds, they made the whole box like some crazy green, brown, maroon looking thing that honestly I thought looked awful, but hey, you know what? They were doing something different. They did the same sort of thing with the patent breads. They made the entire outside of the box glossy, which I really liked. But for this shoe, for some reason, even though this colorway is so tied into Michael Jordan's history, they didn't decide to change the box, which is weird to me. I mean, even just making the box maroon and then making the logo yellow like the shoes, I feel like would have differentiated the box and made it feel a little bit more special. I realize that there's costs involved and they probably already have a bunch of these standard Air Jordan 1 boxes made. It would cost a lot more to print a whole new run of the boxes, but at the same time, if you're really trying to differentiate this shoe, give it a different box. I mean, I know in a lot of cases, packaging doesn't seem that important, especially when it comes to sneakers, because you only really see it when you get the shoe from the store, and then after that, some people even just throw the box out. But at the same time, it's something that just adds to the experience of getting the shoe and makes it that much more special. And I feel like just changing the colors would have really made this a more exciting experience. Also, if you heard stuff rattling around when I was talking, this is the stupid shoe trees. I forgot to take them out before I filmed this video. So standard looking box aside, you do have a size tag on the front of the box. I grabbed a size eight and a half because that was the only pair of available on instant ship at the time that I grabbed these. And the official colorway of this shoe is University Gold Light Bordeaux. I mean, come on. Wouldn't it look better with the maroon and yellow box? Just my opinion, but I think it would. So if you're not familiar with the story behind the Air Jordan 1 Brotherhood, the colors used on this shoe are the same colors that are used by the fraternity Omega Psi Phi. And as you probably could have guessed, the reason that they're using the colors from that fraternity is because that's the fraternity that Michael Jordan went to or was part of when he was in college. And not only is Omega Psi Phi part of Michael Jordan's storied history as a Tar Heel, it's also one of the leading historic African American fraternities. So although the colorway of this shoe might not be exactly what you expect when you think of an Air Jordan 1, when you look back at the history of Michael Jordan and what he's been through growing up, this is definitely a shoe that makes a lot of sense. But let's dig a little bit deeper into the shoe itself and find out what materials make up this crazy looking sneaker. So starting off around the toe of the sneaker, you've got this light maroon colored leather mudguard. This maroon color actually extends all the way up the eye stay of the sneaker to the heel portion of the shoe, and again is in the same sort of color blocking style as the black toe or the bread toe Air Jordan 1s. Except of course on those shoes, this color would be black and not maroon. In the center of the toe, you've got this yellow tumbled leather that comes in almost like a satin or matte finish. It's interesting because when I first saw these shoes online, I thought all the matte panels on the shoe were actually suede, but it turns out they're not. It looks like the entire shoe is leather, but it's interesting how just a matte finish can make the entire material on a shoe look different. As you move up on the shoe, you'll find these flat maroon colored laces which come pre-started in the bottom eyelets. However, if you don't love this matching look, you can switch them out for yellow laces or white laces which are both provided in the box. Then underneath the laces, you've got your standard white Air Jordan 1 nylon tongue, and at the top of the tongue, you've got this yellow Nike Air tag which features the Nike Air branding in maroon. Moving inside the sneaker, you've got a maroon colored fabric sock liner, and then rounding off the inside of the shoe, you've got a yellow insole with the Nike Air branding printed on the heel in maroon. As far as sizing and fit, at least from what I can tell, because again, this shoe is a half size small, it does seem like the Air Jordan 1 Brotherhoods do fit true to size and fit just like every other pair of Air Jordan 1s. And even though this shoe wasn't exactly my size, the way that I was able to tell is because, of course, I have a couple pairs of eight and a half Air Jordan 1s in my collection. They fit just like this pair, and that same colorway in a size nine fits true to size. And for 
For that reason, I'm confident in saying that the Air Jordan 1 Brotherhoods fit just like every other pair of Air Jordan 1s, and for me, that's true to size. Also, did you happen to peep the Apothecary Essentials socks that I'm wearing in the on-foot parts of this video? They are absolutely fire, my favorite pair of socks ever. And on a side note, I just figured out how to add the merch drawer underneath my video, so if you guys want to grab any of my Apothecary socks at any time, you can grab them through that merch drawer just below this video. And in my opinion, they look great with the Air Jordan 1 Brotherhoods, but again, I think they look great with every sneaker, so, you know, take that for what you will. <laughs> Continuing back on the shoe, you get to one of the only white elements on the entire upper of the shoe other than the tongue, and that's this white leather midfoot panel. I don't know what it is, but for like the last six months, I've noticed that most of the Air Jordan 1s that come out have these weird ripples in their midfoot leather, which doesn't make sense to me. I'm not sure exactly why that would be. I don't think the shoes are fake because I've seen it in multiple pairs from stores. It just seems like a quality control issue. Maybe the leather that they're using now just sucks more than the leather that they used to use. I don't know. Then on top of this ripply leather, you've got this maroon colored Nike swoosh. And moving even farther back in the shoe, you get to more of that yellow tumbled leather on the heel and on the wing. As you could probably already tell from the B-roll shots, it seems like the only tumbled leather that they used on this shoe is on the yellow panels. And on the maroon panels, you just have more of a standard flat leather, which is fine. I like the way that the shoe not only has contrasting colors, but also contrasting textures. It makes the shoe much more interesting overall. And of course, you can't forget the Preston Wings logo on the lateral side of the shoe. In this colorway, it comes in a matching maroon. Moving down on the shoe, unsurprisingly, you get to a bright white midsole. And finally, rounding off the look, you've got a bright yellow rubber on the outsole. So it's brutal honesty time. When I first saw this shoe online, or images of this shoe online, I was like, what is Jordan Brand doing? This shoe looks like a mess. It's crazy. But uh, the more that I researched about the shoe, and the more that I saw images of it, which seems like a great marketing play by Nike, let people see the shoe first, and then slowly push out more and more images and more media around the shoe, which actually I'm contributing to right now, uh, it makes you like the shoe a lot more. And now that I understand the history behind this shoe, and uh, have it in person, which I feel like is such a cop-out to say because everyone says it, but it's actually true in this case, I dig it. It's not my favorite shoe of the year. It's not a contender for sneaker of the year by any stretch of the imagination, but in my opinion, it's a solid Air Jordan 1 colorway. Now, with that being said, I don't think this shoe is going to be that popular of a sneaker overall. I feel like this is one of those shoes that will, of course, sell out because it's a Jordan 1, but the resale value on this shoe is not going to be crazy. I feel like this is one of those shoes that's just very hard to rock with a lot of different outfits. I tried to match as best as I could, as you guys can tell, but even this, like the yellow is different, the maroon is different, it's not an easy shoe to rock. However, if you're adventurous and you're willing to try something different when it comes to Air Jordan 1 colorways, this is not a bad way to go. Plus, the materials on this shoe aren't terrible. They're not the worst, but they're definitely not the best. They're kind of somewhere in between. They're workable, which I guess is all we can really ask for from Jordan brand at this point, but uh, they're not going to win any awards. Not that they would, I don't know why I even said that, but... There you go. My one complaint is the quality control issues, which kind of seems to be the case with a lot of recent Jordan releases and recent Nike releases. They're releasing so many pairs of these shoes, I'm sure quality control is a nightmare, but at the end of the day, you're spending $170 on a product, you would like to expect that that product is going to be good quality. And while I don't think this shoe is bad quality, the fact that there's glue stains all over the place and ripples in the leather just kind of puts me off a little bit. But it is what it is. If you really care about that stuff, vote with your wallet and not with your Instagram post, because Nike doesn't really care about those. They care if they're losing money, and if you really hate the quality of Nike, sneakers, don't buy them. If you don't care, then buy them. It's fine. It doesn't really matter. I'm a little ashamed to admit that I just kind of take it for what it is at this point. But uh, hey, with that being said, that pretty much rounds off the video for today. Now, I would love to know your thoughts on the upcoming Air Jordan 1 Brotherhoods and whether you're planning to grab a pair of these for yourself. So make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one. Oh, oh no!